Hi, I'm Sari Sudekran. Let me explain as simply as I can the difference between raw, log, compression, and LUTs. Pay attention. It's a cinematography equivalent of the birds and the bees. First up, raw. Raw in all caps, not raw. Some people use the phrase raw footage to mean the footage that came hot off the camera. Unedited footage. But raw in all caps is something else. You see it on the ARRI website or RED, Sony, anybody making cameras. RAW is always in caps because it means one specific thing. And that is the raw data from the sensor that has not been converted into a viewable image yet. Sensors are light collecting devices. Most sensors have a color filter system called the Bayer filter. There are other color filter technologies, but all you have to understand is every pixel that collects light just collects light from zero to its maximum. Think of it as black and white light. The filter in front of it is typically one color, red, green, or blue. Whatever light passes through this will be tinted with this color. Once the data passes on to the camera processing system, it has to be blended together to form a viewable image. This process is called debayering. Bayer filter gives it a color pattern, debayering uses that information, and with the help of cool computer trickery, an image is made where every pixel now has all three colors, red, green, and blue. This one color to many colors happens real time in every camera. If it didn't, you wouldn't see an image in the back LCD or the electronic viewfinder or an output via HDMI. The camera has to do it. Raw data has to be debayered before it can look like an image. If you've shot with any DSLR, mirrorless, or video camera, you'll know manufacturers give you different presets, looks, styles, profiles, whatever you might want to call it. The camera manufacturers keep this process secret. Only they know how they're taking the data and converting it to these styles. It all happens inside the camera and we don't have access to it. Professional photographers and cinematographers don't like that. They want complete freedom to do whatever they can with the image. This is why in most high-end and even prosumer cameras, you get RAW as a file that you can record in. What are the benefits specific to RAW? For one, you can change colors without penalty, you can change white balance, you have highlight recovery, etc, etc. In a nutshell, RAW is the best image possible from any camera, period. The RAW file is usually proprietary. ARRI has ARRI RAW, it's .ARI, RED is R3D, and so on. You might need proprietary software to open and manipulate the RAW file. Or you can use third-party programs like Premiere Pro and Resolve. Bottom line, once the data has left the camera, you need a program that can take that RAW all caps data and turn it into an image. Cinematographers that started with digital in the early days wanted a workflow that followed film. So Log was designed because film was scanned in Log. And ARRI designed Log C so the raw data can be converted in camera or debared to Log. So now that becomes the starting point. Instead of giving you five presets or Kodak film looks or Fuji looks, they decided that was too restrictive and backward looking. So they made Log. Log looks flat because it is designed to emulate the curve of film and preserve maximum dynamic range. The reason why Log looks like it does is not relevant to new cinematographers because they don't have a reference to it. That's why it's so confusing. But what is universally true is no one likes to look at flat images on a monitor or viewfinder. So you need to correct it, even on set. The simplest way to do this is to use a LUT or lookup table. A LUT basically corrects a flat image quickly to an image of your choosing. It's like a quick fix filter. This can also be done in a complex way through color grading, where you change all the parameters to get a usable image. The lookup table is just a quick formula that takes whatever footage is given to it, doesn't care or judge, and then blindly applies that formula baked into it. It can't be changed or do any intelligent analysis. For a LUT to be professional, you must know exactly what the final output should be like. When the Alexa came out, the standard in the HDTV world was Rec. 709. Most HDTVs until a couple of years ago were Rec. 709. The reds, greens, blues, the dynamic range, the contrast, all are clearly defined in Rec. 709. Because it was the broadcast standard for high definition TV worldwide, there was still PAL and NTSC from the legacy days, but they're mostly dead now and need not be considered. Rec. 709 itself is on its last legs as we speak. The other standard cinematographers wanted and still want is DCI-P3, the color space specific to cinema. 
so you either had REC 709 or DCIP3. ARI created an official LUT to be used with its official log for its official ARI RAW and its own official camera, the ARI Alexa. There were cameras before and after the Alexa, but the Alexa was and continues to be the gold standard, not only in usage but also in the simplicity of its workflow. If you want to understand RAW, LOG and LUTs, learn the ARI workflow. Everybody else just copied what they did because they did it so well. Some blindly aped the ARI simplicity, others made it worse. No one has done it better yet. Red cameras debear to reg log and red provides official lookup tables to convert the flat log to a standard you want. Today the typical standard is Reg 2020, the standard for UHD. Reg 2020 is even better than DCI-P3, so DCI might one day be redundant. Otherwise, cinemas run the risk of showing worse footage than what is visible on your mobile phones and laptops. Then of course there's HDR. But I made a whole different video about that if you're interested. To continue with cameras, Blackmagic shoots in Blackmagic RAW, uses log to debear and has its own lookup tables for standardized image. Sony and Canon have the same, etc. Every serious camera company that lets you shoot RAW will force you to debear to their proprietary log, which forms the starting point. You may choose to use their official LUT to get a standard image for TV or cinema, or you may color grade and get whatever look you want. This is why RAW and LOG are currently tied together. If you shoot RAW, you must start with a LOG encoding of that RAW to even see a usable image. Later you can do whatever you want with it. Remember the engineers who made the camera know more about this than you do. It would be prudent to follow their workflow. And finally, how does all this relate to compression? Data is either uncompressed, in other words all of it, or compressed, which is enough of it, so you won't miss anything. Here's the simplest example I can think of. You have a bank account number that looks like this with four zeros in front. Every math teacher worth anything would have told you in school to not write those extra zeros. But banks like it. If you want to reduce space, you can tell the computer to put zeros in later, but remove them for storage so you can save disk space. Compression does this and many other complicated things to reduce file size. It's an entirely separate thing from raw or log. Raw, log, compression and LUTs are all different. One video can just have one or all four things. For example, your camera might shoot raw or normal video, which is debeard and has a look already applied to it. You can choose to encode to log if you're shooting compressed video, like you get with some mirrorless cameras, or you could choose not to shoot log. If you're shooting raw, the first step is always log. That's the correct workflow. And then you can have compressed raw or uncompressed raw. Some cameras record an uncompressed raw. Red and black magic design offer compressed raw. All manufacturers offer standard official LUTs so you can get a starting image that shows their best effort. If you don't like it, you can make your own. Or not use LUTs at all, just grade to whatever look you want. It's all possible and doable. Modern cameras are flexible so cinematographers and post-production houses from the film era can adopt digital without too much pain. And it still offers newer cinematographers who don't care about all that to just bypass the unnecessary stuff and get to the final picture. You can keep it really simple, like how Roger Deakins does it. He uses a LUT based on the ARI official LUT, just tweaked to his taste, and he has been using that for most of his films shot with the ARI Alexa. He was an early adopter of the camera. He doesn't care about log or raw or LUTs or compression. That LUT he created is uploaded to the camera, the monitor and the viewfinder, and all he sees is the image he likes to see. He also sends that LUT to the editor and colorist and that's it. As a cinematographer there is no need to overcomplicate things, no need to understand things further than this. Just go out there and shoot something good. I hope you found this video useful, I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.